We're going to take you inside Washington's International Spy Museum. It's there with a former CIA operative, Peter Ernest. Hi, Larry. I'm Peter Ernest, director of the International Spy Museum. And after 35 years in CIA, it's probably a good place for me to be. Right now, we are immersed in a world of spies. We're dealing with items like the Snowden case, with a focus on intelligence, how we acquire it, how we use it, and how effective it is. This is our oldest artifact. It's a letter from George Washington to a gentleman by the name of Nathaniel Sackett, assigning him a spy mission in New York City. Remember, New York was occupied by the British. And that's why today he's regarded as the father of American intelligence. This is one of my favorites. We call this a bird cam. It's a camera hanging on a pigeon. And these were actually used during World War I. Here we'll see a history of bugging devices. Uh, you'll see from the end of World War II, it's about the size of a fist, all the way to the present, where it truly would fit into your martini olive. This is the hall of celebrity spies, people who have either been spies and then become celebrities or use their celebrityhood to spy. Here, for example, is a picture of Julia Child, often not thought of as a spy, but she, in fact, did join CIA uh, during the Cold War and served in an administrative capacity supporting the spy effort in Asia. We are focused here on the phenomenon of our times, which is the threat of cyber attacks. On my left is a laptop actually used by Jester, an American hacktivist who has made a specialty of attacking those who've attacked us, such as WikiLeaks. He made a point of donating this laptop to the museum. In November of 2012, we opened a brand new major exhibit, Exquisitely Evil, 50 Years of Bond Villain. And here we look at Bond as a cultural phenomenon and how much the 50 years of those 23 films have influenced the public's perception of espionage and spies.